Hey coders, Darren here, and today we're continuing the Unity 3D Mechanem tutorial series. So if you haven't seen some of our previous tutorials on this topic, make sure you watch those as we are building on previously talked about concepts. So in this tutorial, we're going to create an automated doorway where when I move this capsule close to it, the doors will automatically open. And as he moves further away from the doors, the doors will automatically close. So we're gonna be using two animations, open and close to control this system. And we'll write a short code file to handle the trigger events. So the doorway is going to have some trigger events. It's going to have a rigid body so it can respond to those events. And everything else will be controlled by Mechanem. So let's start off by creating our uh, actual animations. So we'll go ahead and click on the doorway and click create and make sure that you go up to window and you open up your animation and animator window. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click create and the first animation we're going to create is called open. So we have our dope sheet opened up here and if I click on my doorway we have the animator component with the doorway controller already on it. So the dope sheet is going to be able to modify all children objects which is really useful. Uh, so what we can do is just click on our doorway, make sure we hit record, click our right door, and then make sure we just modify this position so we can record some value uh, at the zeroth frame. So we can see our keys got added here. Now for our right door, the first frame should be uh, 0.5 on the x-axis. The left door should be negative 0.5 uh, on the x-axis. So actually I don't know why this isn't being, oh, I didn't click record. So make sure you have record clicked. Uh, these fields will show up red to notify you that it is recording. So the left door should be negative 0.5. So now what we wanna do is make a decision on how long we want this animation to be. So I'm going to say every 40, every 40 frames the animation should finish. So if I click on up here at 40 and then double click down here on the second bar, we create some new keys. And uh, when it's open, we want the right door to be at 1.5 and the left door to be at negative 1.5. So this is what the doors will look like when they're open. I can press play and we can watch those open. Of course, we won't want this animation to be on loop, but we will address that a little bit later. So now that we have the open animation, we can go ahead and create the close animation. So I can come up here and uh, click where the open animation is. We get a drop down that shows all of our animations on this controller. And I just wanna click create new clip. So the, the clip that we're gonna create is gonna be called close. So what we want to do now is click on our doorway, make sure that we are recording, and let's record our initial value of our right door to 1.5. And the initial value on our left door is negative 1.5. So keep in mind that these values are the same as the final values on our open animation. In other words, our close animation should start off where the doors are open and end where they are closed. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to make the length of our close animation the exact same as our open animation. That's of course something that you can decide on your own. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the 40th frame of this animation, double click down here, create the new keys. And the keys at the end of the close animation should be for the right door 0.5 on the X. So 0.5 and on the left door should be negative 0.5. So let's run this animation we can see that they're closing and of course we won't want that to be on loop so let's go ahead and address the loop issue now keep in mind that if we simulate up here in the editor it will always be on loop but the animation clips down here in our assets folder will actually always be uh, initialized to loop so we can just uh, uncheck loop time there to make sure that these animations don't loop we only want them to be executed once Okay, so we have our two animations. Now we need to go into our animator controller and click on our doorway. And now we can see some of our states that we created. We created the open and close state, uh, but when we start the application, we don't want the doors to just open. So let's go to the scene and press play. And we can see the doors just open. We don't actually want that. Uh, we only want the doors to open when we tell them to or whenever somebody walks into them. So we want to actually delete this state that's the only way we can disconnect the connection between entry and open. So I'll delete that, I'll delete this, I'll create a new state uh, called uh, rest, we can call this rest. 
So now we have an entry to rest where there is no animation and that's actually what we want. Now we'll create another state called empty, or I'm sorry, we'll create another state called open and another state called close. So let's create another empty, call this close. And the motion for open is the open animation that we created. The motion for close is the close animation that we created. So I'll just select those like that. And now we're going to be creating some links between these. So rest, going from the rest state, there's only one place that we can go uh, from rest, and that is open. And there's only one place we can go from open, which is close. And there's only one place we can go from close, which is rest. So this is what our animation uh, controller is going to look like. So we're going to be going from rest to open, from open to close, and from close to rest. So if you don't know how I did that, you can just right click on the state and say make a transition. And then you'll get this arrow showing up and you can just click on the uh, animation or the state that you want to transition to. Okay, now of course we're going to need some parameters so that this isn't just looping continuously. Actually, nothing will happen because we don't know how to go from rest to open yet. So what we want to do is come up here to this little plus sign or go to the parameters layer first, click on the plus sign, and you can see that we get some different types of uh, parameters here. I'm going to use bool for this tutorial, and our bool is going to be is open. So this is a parameter we're going to be able to modify from script to tell this controller what to do. So going from rest to open, so if we click this arrow for that transition, so if we go from rest to open, uh, first thing we wanna do is click on this condition, uh, this plus sign on the condition, and this is going to say, hey, if is open is true, so I select my parameter, if is open is true, which is the condition, so you can think about this like an if statement in code, so if is open is true, then we're going to follow this arrow. So that's what this means. And we're going to say uh, there is no exit time for this. And all exit time means is that the rest animation has to finish before we go to this transition. Now rest doesn't have uh, any animation, so I suppose it doesn't really matter, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. So from open to close, you can kind of guess what we need to do. Um, we need to make sure that is open is set to false before we go from open to close. Uh, so when we set is open is false on our script file, then the animation will go to close. Now there is actually no condition for going from close to rest, but what we what we can say is that this transition has exit time, which means we must wait until the doors are closed before we go back to the rest state. So we don't actually have to do anything here. Uh, so going from open to close, we actually do, we actually don't need exit time. So if the doors are halfway open, by the time the player actually gets all the way through the doors, we can just close the doors. We don't need to wait for the doors to open completely. Uh, so this looks like it's pretty solid. Now all we need to do is write the script to modify or manipulate this controller. So let's go down to our project panel, create C-sharp script, call this doorway and we'll drag this onto our doorway object. Then we'll open the script doorway and wait for that to load for a minute. We'll go ahead and clear the contents of this and I have that popping up. So we'll clear the contents of this and we'll add a reference to our animator called anim and in start we'll go ahead and initialize anim. So equals new or I'm sorry, equals get component. Since this is on the doorway object, we can say get component animator because that animator component was auto added automatically for us. Now, we are going to have to add a rigid body to this doorway object so that it can actually listen for these trigger event, uh, event functions. So we'll have on trigger enter, pass a collider to that. We don't actually need to do anything with the collider. We don't need to check which collider it is because uh, the door should say, hey, no matter what collider is trying to, to interact with me, I'm going to open or close accordingly. In other words, we don't need to do a check for the collider's tag. We can just say, hey, if there's an on trigger enter event with this doorway, then all we're going to do is say anim.setbool, 
and that bool is that parameter that we created just a second ago, and we're going to set this to true. So we can set the is open parameter from our animator controller to true, and that's going to move us from the open state or from the rest state to the open state. So we'll actually start opening the door. Now on trigger exit, we want to set this to false. So we go from open to close and the doors get closed. And once the close animation finishes, we automatically go back to rest because we have no conditions on the closed to rest transition. So this should be all we need for the doorway. Let's go back to Unity and see what else we need to do. Okay, so we should click on our doorway and make sure that we actually add a rigid body component to our doorway. So let's go ahead and add that rigid body. The only reason we need this rigid body on our doorway is so we can listen to on trigger enter and on trigger exit events. So I'm disabling or constraining all of the position and rotation uh, modifiers here on the rigid body because we don't want our doorway to react to any sort of physics. Again, the only reason we need the rigid body is to respond to on trigger enter and on trigger exit events. Uh, and of course, gravity should be unchecked. Now our box collider, which I've already set the size parameters for, you can go ahead and copy those if you want. The box collider on the doorway should be is trigger and the person or this capsule is going to have a capsule collider on it and we need to make sure that we set that to is trigger. Okay, so now whenever our capsule runs into this box, this green hit box, then the door should open and when the collider or the capsule leaves that hit box, then the door should close. So I have no idea if this is actually gonna work, but let's just run it and see if we run into any issues. So I'll move them close to it and the doors open. And when I exit that collider, they close. So that's working perfectly actually. So that's actually going to conclude the tutorial. We've done what we wanted to do. And coming up, we're gonna start manipulating some UI elements using Mechanim. If you have any suggestions for what we should do with Mechanim, leave those in the comments and we'll try to get to those as soon as possible. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day.